So, today we'll be talking on how to parse text. So, does everyone here know what a parser is? I'm guessing yes. It's something that takes text and makes a data structure out of it. Hello! Welcome! <laughs> so, obviously a data structure that is not a string. Because otherwise it would be kind of irrelevant. So, our goal here is to create something that will do something like this. Right. Given a bit of text, it will return a success or a fail. If it's a success, it'll return the value that, that has been parsed as, lo as well as the next input. And if it's a fail, it'll return the reason for failure. So our goal here is to create, to parse this type of grammar. Right? The grammar will, have, will begin with the word hello or the word goodbye. It will be followed by a space, followed by the word world, and optionally followed by... Um, um, exclamation point, right? So I, these three are a success, and this is a fail, right? Because this is the same shape, but not a thing. And obviously, this could be done by with like splitting strings, but uh, that wouldn't be as much fun. So uh, let's start first, because we have like success and fail return types. We should define those as classes, or as data structures. Success. This gets the value next input. Next input is next input. This is why I don't like this part. I don't like classes in JavaScript, but I don't like this functional stuff either because so this function, not functional function stuff. Because you have to type the same thing a million times. There we go. So them are two classes, right? So now we're gonna write the first parser and the only parser that will actually know anything that uh, regarding text, which is fun. So we're gonna define the simplest of all parsers, which is we will call the item parser, which takes input and returns a new success of input of zero and the next value to parse will be input dot substring of one right. so now if we do here if we say the parser is item and we console lock this out I'm just gonna console lock the first one and we'll, we'll assume the other ones either work or don't node Man, I forgot something. What's wrong? Unexpected token script. What file is this? Oh, yeah. Um, sorry, wrong uh, node. New parse. There you go. Yay. So we, par we parsed the first letter. However, we didn't actually do anything, right? We didn't check if it's correct. We didn't... We, we have no way of specifying a grammar. This this parser, in air quotes, only knows how to take a little bit of input and like strip out the first thing and uh, put everything in the next input. So this brings us nicely to our next parser called the satisfies. Satisfies parser, right? This will take a predicate function and return a function, in this case, that takes input. And on this, It'll call item, and we'll do here if pred of r dot value. Oh, sorry. Um, if r instance of success. There are better ways of writing this. I'm just not going to bother for now. And the value, the value matches the predicate, or the predicate returns true for uh, for the value. Then we will return r. Otherwise, we'll return a new fail of uh, r dot value. Uh, sorry, of no, actually, return r as well. Um, where was I going with this? This is always instance of success. What am I doing here? There we go. 
In this case, we return an R, otherwise we return a new fail, and we say R.value does not match. Right. So this then becomes satisfies, where we give it an anonymous little function here called x, where x is equal to h. Right. Satis. Would be nice if I could type. So yay, that still succeeded. But now, if we if we replace this with Jello, it will fail because G does not match. Good, we're on our way to creating a full-blown parser. Next step would be nice to have this shorthand because we're going to use this parser, uh, the, the single character parser a lot. So it would be nice to have a parser called token that takes a character and returns satisfies of x, where x is equal to c. Satisfies. Right, so then this becomes token of h. Yay, that still works. Great. So, now that we have a token box, it would be really nice if we could say, okay, it's this token followed by the token E, right? So, this is a concept called catenation, or in regex, the equivalent of regex would be when you do uh, A, B, C, right? This means A followed by B followed by C, or in this case, it's hello, right? So, we'll define a function cat that takes several parsers parsers and returns a function that takes input and will return a success or a failure so catenation works all all the parsers must match right must match the success, successive inputs if they don't then the whole thing fails so um, to do this we're gonna do results and right? results is an array um, so cat will not return a single item as the value in the success, but rather an array of the accumulated values. And same goes for other boxes as well. So here we just do a for i equals zero i less than parsers dot length i plus plus. Um, okay. Now we do let R equals parsers of i of input, right? and now we say if R instance of fail, we just early return the fail, right? We want it to stop, but if it's not, we want to do results dot push push R dot value and input. The one in here, right? We need to move on so it becomes r dot next input. So it keeps going. And when we reach the end, we just return a new success of the results and the remaining input because this keeps get overridden. Dot next input. Oh, uh, sorry, and the remaining input. That's it. Great. So now we should be able to do cat of h followed by the token e. Right. So the first one matches with h and e, but the second one fails. Right? Same thing would happen if we say instead of hello, hello. Same thing, but this time it says a doesn't match. Right? We could do some fancy stuff here by aggregate, by, by keeping track of the, the line numbers and so on, but I'm not going to bother here. There's no point. Okay, so this is nice. We have this. It would be nice now to have a parser that we can say, okay, parse the word hello, right? So we'll create it. Word. And this will get a W word. And all this will be will be return cat dot apply of null because that's how JavaScript works. And array dot from W map token. This is pretty condensed, but basically we create an array out of the string, and for each 
character in the string we create a token. Right? So this will let us do word hello. Yay. Another thing that would be nice now is that if the word parser wouldn't return an array of all the characters but the string. So we could do that in, in at least two ways, one of which would be to actually make this return a function right, that takes an input, it creates the parsers and does all the and applies the join function to, to the result. Um, a better way would be to make it slightly more abstract. So we'll create the map parser. It takes an F and a P f being a function that would be applied. So this is map just like for arrays, but it will be on parsers. Um, and p is the parser. This will re return a function that takes input. We'll do let r is p of input if r is instance of success. Then we do um, return new success of f of r dot value and r dot next input. And so this one doesn't really do much, it just applies, transforms the value in some way. Otherwise we return r because it means r is a failure. Right, so now word can be simply defined as mapping of x and we can do either x dot join here with nothing and this will give us the correct result Right, so it gives us the result. It gives us the result "hello" as a string instead of "hello" as an array. Or if we want to avoid and do a little bit of performance optimizations, we can just return "w". And this will work just fine, because map only works when it's a success. So we know that if it got there, it works. Great. Now, in the original example, I mentioned we want to do "hello" and "goodbye." Right. In this case. It can't work because there's no way for us to decide between either one parser or another parser to be executed. So we need the equivalent of the pipe operator in, in regex. So A pipe B in regex means um, A or B. And you can have as many of them as you want chained together. Uh, so this, in a slightly more um, formal way, is called alt. So alternative between several parsers. So again, we'll take a list of parsers, and again, we will return a function that takes the input. And here, what this needs to do is return the first value, the first parse that succeeds. Right? So in this case, we're just going to do a for i equals 0 i less than input, uh, I'm sorry, then parsers.length i plus plus, and we're going to do uh, let r equals parsers the parsers of i of input if r instance of success return r otherwise if we get to this point it's a fail because nothing matched we just return a new fail Saying nothing Matched. We could do something nice like here as well, like aggregating all the fails and returning an array of reasons for failure. Not going to do that either. So now we can just test it out and see if we do alt of hello and the word goodbye. Yay! So now both are successes and only those two. So if I if I return here. Hello. This one fails because nothing matched. Great. So now there's two more things that exist in regex that we don't yet have, and that's the star and the plus. Well, actually the maybe as well, but that one's easy. Uh, so the star means zero or more uh, times. So if you have, say, a star, it means match a zero or more times. If you have a plus, means match a one or more times. And if you have a question mark, that means match it zero or once. So it's optional, in a sense. Um, so, um, 
we're going to implement them. First, we're going to implement the repetition, i.e., the star. Right? It's also known in. Uh, it's also known as the clingy star with a K. I can't spell it though. So this one takes a single parser and returns a function. As always, it returns the input. Right. Now, in this case, we need to keep keep executing that parser until it stops working. Right? So and accumulate all the results. So let results. And we know this the repetition will always succeed because if nothing matches, it will succeed with nothing because it's zero or more. So we need to re so we can just return new success of results. And input because we're gonna keep overriding this variable like good little programmers. Um, um, okay, so now we need to do uh, let r is p of input while r instance instance of success um, input is r dot next input and results dot push r dot value and r is equal to p of input. There we go. So that's how we implement repetition. So this basically will allow us to say hello hello word world. Right? And instead of having having a catenation of three hellos, we can have zero or more hellos. So that I'm just gonna delete these ones for now. That would look like this. It's repeat Hello. Oh, sorry. It's gotta be hello, hello, hello. Boom, there you go. It parsed hello three times. We can also combine these in arbitrary ways. Very good. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> so we can actually combine these in nice arbitrary ways. So we can say, oh, by the way, it's either hello or the word goodbye. Right. So at this point, we can just say change to h. We can say hello, goodbye, hello, and it'll still parse just fine. We can combine this with cat and alt with cat and cat with alt and all of them together. And so that's really nice, I think. Okay, I mentioned the plus. Let's implement the plus. I'm just going to call this plus. I like saying plus. So the plus is going to be the same thing. Uh, actually, sorry. Plus, because we already have repetition and catenation, we can implement it really, really easily by just saying it is the catenation of P and rep of P. Right? This won't return exactly what we want, but we'll make it do that. So now, oh, by the way, this one also matches nothing. So if I just do this, yay, it matched nothing. And the rest of the, res the input is the same. So now, if I say here, plus, this kind of works, right? It takes the first one. And the second one. But the problem is, the first one is its own thing, instead of being a single a single array. So we're actually going to map over this to make it look the part. Uh, so we know because map only works on success. We know here we're gonna get the first value and the rest. A little bit of destructing here. And what we'll do is we will concat the first with the rest. And now it returns exactly what we'd expect. Great. So, the last regex operator that exists apart from like grouping and all that other stuff, so just proper regex, is the maybe one, so the question mark. Because JavaScript doesn't allow me to do this, um, I'm just gonna call this maybe. 
maybe p. So again, maybe is something that always succeeds, right? If the parser fails, then it means it's not there, so it succeeds. So we can do two things, right? We can either, we can, sorry, I had too many cracker thingies. So we can do two things. We can either create a function that, re that takes input and return success or fail based on whatever, or we can use more of, the, of our fancy composition. So here, we just return the alternative between p and something. Right? Thing is, this something needs to succeed regardless and consume no input, and we don't have that. So I'm going to go all the way back up to the top and create another base parser so called pass. It needs, to do what? it needs to succeed regardless of anything, and it needs to not consume any input. So next value needs to be the same value as what it was given. Oh. Right? So item succeeds but takes the first value and then strips it off the input and that's the next input. Right? This one, we need to give it a value, whatever that is, null in this case or whatever, or 42, and it needs to not consume any input but just return success. So we're going to call that one pass. We're going to give it a value. And it's going to return a function that takes in input and just returns a new success of that value and the input. So it does nothing, it just returns what we, what we gave it up, up there. So in this case, this is a pass null. So this now implements the notion of maybe. So we can test that out if we change plus to maybe and let's just simplify this a little bit. So now it's, now our grammar, in our quotes, simply says the input must maybe begin with hello. So if we return, if we make it return, uh, make it start with hello, it succeeds, but it also succeeds if it doesn't start with hello. It just succeeds with null, which is fine. Good. And also, uh, usually parsers, uh, they have a, a function that's called eat. That is the, the opposite of uh, pass, so pass doesn't uh, ah, uh, so doesn't this one, uh, advance the... Yeah, and one that advances without doing anything. Well, we can do, we can do that. Okay, great, let's implement that one. It's a, it's a two-liner, right? We already have something that eats one item, but doesn't do anything, but just succeeds with that value. So if we call it eat, we're never going to use this, by the way, from now on, but if we just call this eat, this takes, um, actually, sorry, it doesn't need to be a function. It can just be a let. Because it will be, we will map uh, nothing, null, and item. Right. Now this, this just eats a value and succeeds with null. There. Because oh. <laughs> item takes one thing and you can do whatever you want with it, and then we just map it to null. Uh, alternatively, we could, I mean, how you would use this in this case, normally what they have is they have a function called eat that just advances the, the thing and doesn't yeah, do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In our case, because we want to return values every time, we need to make it return something, right? Because it, it's just nicer to work with. What you can do then when you, eat, when you eat a value, in this case, is you can have a function like this on your higher parser, right? So. That, that would say, okay, by the way, the first thing is eaten, right? And you just don't use it in the result, right? That's it. Um, okay, so uh, at this point, we have full regex, right? Basically, everything regex can do, um, except for grouping, we can do too. So we can have, at this point, we can create, finally, create the thing we wanted initially, so we can have it say hello question, um, exclamation point goodbye exclamation point and again hello but without the exclamation point right so this would be something like this uh, let's just make it here so this would be something like this we would say okay we want to do a catenation of the word of yeah comma of either the word 
hello, or the word goodbye, followed by maybe or exclamation point. Would be really nice. Yes, I did. And also, I'm missing something somewhere. Yes, and the spaces as well. So this would be token space what world you why is it failing yeah something I'm, I'm missing something yeah, what what mm, yeah okay 73 is around here somewhere ah, there we go parsers of i of input instance sorry Yes. Yeah. Uh, is pass returning a function? Yes, it is. It's failing on the first one. So cat. Is it? No, it's returning satisfies, which itself returns a function. Okay, let's just log those out and see what happened. Uh, <coughs> hate it when this happens. It's all worked out nicely, and there I go, failing again. Um, Console.log parsers of i. Oh! Maybe. Yes, maybe wrong? Yes, of course it is, because maybe takes a parser, not a string. So this is token of exclamation point. Boom! There we go! Woohoo! We managed to parse the whole thing, and it worked. And anything else would obviously fail. I'm actually gonna show it fails, because uh, my credibility is already oh, lost. Yeah, my credibility is already shot. Bang, so something that kinda looks in the same, like it's the same shape. And now I'm again... See, told you, my credibility is lost. Forever now. Missing a paren. There we go. Yay, it failed because nothing matched. Fantastic. So, I mentioned we're gonna do parsers today, but so far we've done regexes. How, how am I on time so that we can build a full blown parser? With like recursion. I only need two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Currently, you can't do this, right? So you can't parse something like JSON with this, right? Because, or arbitrary JSON, because JSON is deeply nested and you don't know how deep it is. I.e., every JSON value is defined in terms of uh, other JSON values, right? So an array is defined in terms of other JSON values. And we can't do that currently. So there's no way for us to parse something. So if we do console.log, parser, so if we have something like a tree structure, right, like this, this is a tree with a single with a single node one. This would be doubly nested tree, whatever, right? Something like this, something that goes infinitely deep with parentheses, and in the middle there's a one, right? This would be kind of like a lot of arrays and then a single value in the middle, right? A lot of nested arrays and then a three in the middle. There's no way we could parse this now because there is no recursion unless we knew the structure right so to get that uh who here was at my lisp talk because i'm going to make a call back to that one so we needed we needed uh so in in order to have recursion so i'm going to go from the start and not call back to that to have recursion inside of a function like x turn x whatever what do we need here what's important the name. That's the only thing we care about. The name such that the name in this context is bound to, the, to itself. So, let's define a context that will hold parsers. And this is just going to be an object. Now we need to create a function that takes a parser, a name and a parser and pops it into that context. I'm going to call it def. It takes a name and a parser. All this does 
is it says context of name is equal to p. And now we're going to need a function that knows how to look up stuff in this context. I'm going to call this p. And we'll give it a name. Sorry? What? Yes. You have you have a problem with with many p's. <laughs> okay, so here you might be thinking we can do this. This won't actually work. But it will give us enough time to to make this kind of be nice. So we can do def digit, right? So we're we're going to try and parse this. And digit a digit is going to be something that satisfies x where x is greater than 0 and x is less than 9 yes this does work on strings just fine I, now we're gonna do def list whatever that is and list will be a catenation of the token open paren followed by this is where we put list p of x per, x per. I haven't defined this one yet. This is going to be our expression. And an expression is either more p's coming. So it's going to be either p of digit or p of list. The parser will be more p's expression, right? This won't won't work yet, right? It'll actually blow up. Um, it didn't blow up now because that is phi's token p of x bar. Oh yeah, it makes sense that this one isn't a function, right? Because we haven't defined it yet. We'd have to define this above because we're, this one just returns this instantly. So what we need to do there is delay the execution. Right? So this shouldn't be called now. It should be called later. And the only construct JavaScript has for delaying executions is functions, so might as well take an input and we pass the input here. Right? So it makes sense that p is not a function because p of expr, when we define it here, returned undefined, right? Because the context is still empty. But if we do it now, p is still not a function. God damn it. Why? What am I missing? Am I putting something stupid again? So list is parenthesis expression that, did I save the file? No, I did not save the file. That was my problem. <laughs> so now that actually, that actually parsed something, right? Let's just do a value here. Hopefully we can see it. So it's lots of parentheses, and somewhere in the middle there's an array. And to, to show that, we can just do just D in here, and 3, and hopefully node printer will print this out. It does not. Let's delete more. There we go. Yay! It parsed. Right? So we can now parse recursively deep. The, the other one's still valid. It's just not. It doesn't show up. Um... Great, so if we were to make this a proper parser, we could actually make the digit. We can do a map, and to convert the string to a number, you can just multiply it by one. Surprisingly, this also works because JavaScript. And now three is a number instead of a string. Here we can do, we can map. Sadly, the structuring doesn't work on anonymous functions, but that's fine. So this will get as input open p um, the expression and close p and this will just return the expression. Something's weird in here. Sorry? Well, yeah, but there were more parentheses. Yeah, you still yeah, don't, you still but you discard open P and close P. Yeah. And it's a 
person. I know, I know, I know, but I shouldn't. Hmm. Why not? Something, some, something's not adding up for me. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, actually, yeah, you're right. Because this one, yeah, obviously. That's obviously what's going on. Because what I, what I actually wanted to do here was say it's zero or more. <laughs> See, I was expecting arrays. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> You're right, so I was actually expecting this to be to be the result. So at this point, we can actually create a full-blown JSON parser with this. And I have, and uh, you will see it on my GitLab page. Uh, not GitHub, because hashtag moving to GitLab for reasons. Um, where I've actually implemented a full-blown JSON parser using this. It is not fast. So it's about 100 times slower than JSON parser. But for something in, like... That's written 119 line, 19 lines. Actually, mine's slightly more involved because I have more operators. Uh, to, to be a hundred times the native, I say is pretty good. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, I'm not doing the string split there. I'm doing. I'm just keeping an index a pointer of the index and passing along the string. Yeah, I'm holding the, the entire thing in the data structure, so the input's a data structure, not just a string. Um, any questions? Is this, uh, why did you do it? For educational purposes, like an exercise, or mm -hmm. is the Where's the profit? Well, surprisingly, we actually do use this. We use something similar, so not an implementation of mine, but a parser that, that works similar to this one. So this is called parser, a parser combinator library, right? Because each of these things, so like token is a parser, but rep is a combinator that takes one or more parsers and does shit with it. Are you DSL, so no, we're parsing the DSL. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're actually parsing a templating language because we need to extract some data out of the templates. So we actually, I actually, I'm, I'm using something called InstaParse, which is a closure library, not important, but it basically works exactly like this. You define a grammar just call parse on a string and it gives you back a data structure in the exact same way I described here. Um, to answer your question, it's mostly educational. Mm -hmm. That being said, I think there's a lot of places where you could use a parser, but people don't and you end up mad munging strings and sp splitting sp strings in weird ways. I don't think that's a good idea ever. This is a much nicer, much more declarative way of doing it. And even if you don't find a library, which you will because there's tons of them, you can just write one in 190 lines, and for most cases, it's going to be great. Right? It's going to be just fine, unless you have like really complicated grammars. Right? But then it might be the problem that the difficult thing might be defining grammar. Yes, so that's always the difficult the thing. That's always the difficult thing. But the advantage, the advantage is obvious, right? I mean, if you're just doing string splitting, then you're doing string splitting, and if something goes wrong. You know, in this case, you're not doing string splitting, you're doing proper parsing, and if something fails, you, you can actually know why it failed. Right? I mean, my error handling here is kind of shit, I'll admit, but uh, it's only a half hour long talk, so this, this is not a good thing. This is not a good idea. Right? To have just nothing matched. You ideally would want to, to know why it, nothing matched and add values. Also, I mentioned in the beginning that item is the only thing that deals with strings. Here's the, here's the fun thing about this, this way of parsing. The input need not be a string. The input can easily be an array. And the combinators need not work on just single values. You could use it to validate maps. You can use it to validate that an array is of a particular shape that you want, with slightly more power than you can in TypeScript, by the way. So this is, our, this is something that's being done in Clojure at the moment. It's part of a, of a core library in Clojure called Core, core Spec. I, I'd recommend you look at it. It's awesome. It's a really nice way of defining, of doing like data validation or parsing data structures, and it's really nice. It's done in exactly this way. Um, and there is a version of JavaScript called JS Spec, which will do basically the same thing but for JavaScript. It also works in a way similar to the way I, I've shown here. So. Um, yeah, I hope that kind of answers your questions as to why, mm -hmm. and also the question as to how's the, where's the profit in it. It's quite a bit of it. <laughs> it's not necessarily in implementing your own, but in knowing that these things exist and knowing how they work, I think that there's immense value in that. Any other questions? Just a fun fact, you said you moved to Yes, because of the reasons. 
I don't care. It's not. It's not. It's Just not a. <laughs> I, I honestly don't care. You can self-host your GitLab. Yeah, also you can self-host it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I know, but that's not the point now, is it? <laughs> that's just an appliance. It's like complaining about the Pepsi because you don't like the fridge. <laughs> okay, so if there are no more questions, I hope you enjoyed this talk, and I will now stop my recording. No, 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 no. No? Oh, thank you!